Hello, everybody. And uh, my bit too loud. I'm Piero Abate. I work from, uh, for Nomadic Lab, that it's a company that develops uh, the Tezos, uh, Tezos software. Today, I'm going to, to talk a bit about uh, Tezos, to talk about governance, and to talk about uh, how the FOSS community, it's, uh, uh, how this is relevant to, to FOSDEM, basically. Tezos, it's, uh, it's a project that started about uh, five years ago. Uh, first uh, as a one-person project, then founded, then uh, we passed through uh, a donation round, uh, and uh, now we, we are in, uh, on a stable uh, network. Uh, why is Tezos uh, uh, interesting to the, uh, to the FOSDEM community? I kind of insisted with, uh, with my company to bring Tezos here to talk about Tezos in, uh, in, this, uh, in this context because I think that uh, the technology we are, we are working on can be, can be interesting, can be, uh, I'm not saying life-changing, but it can contribute to solve a few problems. So first of all, Tezos uh, adopts an open, uh, an open development model. Everything is on, uh, on GitLab. You can find all our source code and uh, work. We develop in, uh, in the clear. We accept contribution from, uh, from the community. Uh, the, the project itself is funded through a foundation. Uh, and uh, the, all the projects, all the people working on, uh, on Tezos are encouraged, encouraged to use uh, open source license, uh, licenses. In particular, all our, soft, our software is uh, released on the MIT license. Uh, the, the point that I want to make today is about governance. Governance is basically uh, this idea on how we make uh, uh, the protocol of uh, blockchain to, to evolve. And uh, we have seen uh, uh, a few struggle, let's say, in, uh, in the last few years, uh, namely in uh, uh, the Bitcoin and the uh, Ethereum uh, communities with uh, different forks for different reasons, sometimes economic, sometimes it's about personality and uh, ego, uh, sometimes it's about technical reasons. So today I want to offer a solution uh, to, this, uh, to this problem. So uh, this is kind of my, uh, the, the, the slides that uh, you should not do on, uh, on a blockchain presentation. What is the blockchain? <laughs> uh, just I wanted to, to put out a few important, I might be on uh, key points. First of all, blockchain, it's immutability, it's decentralization, and, in, and uh, it's, a sec it's security. This is where we put our foundations, and these are all the, all the key points that uh, we try to address on, uh, on, uh, on our software. Uh, and uh, of course, not all the blockchains uh, adhere to these uh, key points. For some others, some uh, um, like anonymity is important. Uh, for us, the governance is important. So there is always trade-off in uh, I want to, uh, to be secure, I want to be anonymous, how, how much centralization, so which, con which kind of consensus algorithm you want to use, how, much, uh, how you want to be resilient if you want to have open network or closed networks, uh, et cetera. Uh, the building blocks of, of blockchain, I mean, blockchain, it's kind of uh, this, uh, this bubble word that a lot of people make fun of nowadays. I, I, was, I put one of these um, papers on the notice board and say, nomadic labs develop blockchain technology, and there was a big lol uh, underneath the word blockchain. I understand that nowadays has become kind of a bubble word because of all this uh, uh, ICO and all these scams around the blockchain and the ups and downs on the markets and etc. But at the end of the day, for people that uh, kind of develop blockchain, blockchain is really easy. Blockchain basically it's a database, a decentralized database, uh, and it's based on uh, public cryptography, you use digital signature and a cryptographic as function. So the cryptography around the blockchain is not kind of complicated. It's uh, uh, something that uh, has uh, already been uh, uh, studied, at least the basic cryptography. Then if you go to zero knowledge proof and all these other kind of quantum cryptography, et cetera, uh, then it's, uh, it's, it's a different kind of uh, research area. Uh, then uh, uh, to, to have a blockchain, we need to have a consensus algorithm because it's decentralized. So basically, we have to propose a, decent, uh, a probabilistic solution to the Byzantine uh, general problems. Uh, if you have a closed network, you can use the standard algorithms. If you have an open network, then with uh, the Bitcoin, and in the last 10 years, we have seen a lot of uh, work done in, uh, in that direction. And uh, then at the distribution level, you need uh, a way to have all these, uh, these nodes. 
in the world talking to each other. And uh, usually a uh, peer-to-peer -peer network or gossip network, it's used to low-level communications. So this, uh, these are, for me, the three basically building, building blocks and ingredients that uh, we, we use. And uh, we call them crypto ledgers because at the end of the day, we just want to record and uh, do a bit of bookkeeping on, uh, on transactions and uh, uh, verify identity on users. And uh, uh, of course, ensure the immutability of this data. So the design goal of, uh, of Tezos are, are kind of uh, two main design goals. We want to, uh, it's, uh, first of all, I want to stress the world self-amending. That is where governance comes in. Governance is the process where we upgrade the protocol. And uh, by, this, uh, by this process, we have to get together and decide where we want to go, which, uh, the, which technology and advancement we want to pursue, where, uh, what our users, for example, want, or uh, sometimes also the economic consideration. So if this upgrade is done, how the market or the, the, the people are reacting to this, uh, to this upgrade. So it's, uh, it's, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of work to, to try to put people together. And uh, we, Tezos focus on uh, this governance to have uh, an on-chain mechanism to allow this uh, protocol upgrade. I'm going to explain a bit more how this works. And uh, the second uh, big uh, design goal of Tezos, it's about security and formal verification. In, uh, in my company, we all come from uh, academia. We're all people that we've been uh, uh, working in universities for about 10 years. And uh, we are really focusing on uh, trying to verify part of the code that's already verified and extracted the ACL star part for, uh, um, uh, for cryptography, for, for example. And uh, we're working on... Uh, verifying, or at least establishing a framework to formally verify smart contracts. So once you develop on the blockchain, you have something, some mathematical insurance that uh, your, product, your smart contract is going to adhere to your specifications. Uh, I'm going to talk mostly today about governance, but uh, I don't want to forget that uh, uh, on our blockchain, basically, it's a smart contract platform as well. But today, I'm going basically to ignore this part and to focus on only on, uh, on governance. So the protocol, uh, the protocol is the heart of the blockchain. Uh, and uh, if you look at uh, what a node does, it's basically he receives uh, a lot of uh, blocks and uh, operations. And uh, the, um, the protocol analyzes these blocks of operations, sometimes uh, uh, accept them, validates them, sometimes they refuse them. The one that validates uh, using a, uh, using a form of consensus algorithm uh, become part of the chain, and then they get redistributed to, to all the others. In, uh, in our terminology, we call this the economic protocol. And this is just the only part that we want to change. We want to change the rules, how blocks and operations are expressed, validated, and uh, redistributed on the network. Everything else is kind of uh, what we call the framework. So the, 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 the thesis, um, the Tezos model is built, built on uh, two main blocks. One is the protocol that we can change, we can amend, and uh, we can um, innovate on. And uh, this is uh, the part uh, that, I, uh, that it's about governance. The second part is about the framework. The framework is basically all the, the, all the tools and uh, bells and whistles that you need to, 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 to create a node and uh, to, to make it work. So the, the framework is uh, kind of generic. It's, uh, um, um, we try to, to specify how this, uh, uh, the, the interface of this framework to insert your protocol. Uh, and we invite other people to develop the, the same framework in other programming languages. So we are not the only one developing this, uh, this part of the code. Uh, it's consensus protocol agnostic. So the idea that uh, we can plug any consensus algorithm in this framework and uh, implement for example, other blockchain uh, using the same software. Uh, of course, there is a strong emphasis on verified components, and we try to adhere to kind of best practices uh, from the engineering perspective. It's written in OCaml. OCaml is a programming language that has been developing in uh, France in the last uh, 25, 30 years. So it's a uh, you might know ReasonML, that is, uh, it's produced by Facebook. ReasonML, it's basically just uh, 
a bit of uh, syntax on top of OCaml. That is a strongly typed functional language uh, that um, we, uh, we have been using for, uh, for developing Tezos. And uh, of course, this framework has already been used in production. It's pretty stable and it's uh, continuously, continuously evolving. Uh, going uh, more in details about this framework, Basically, there's a, a modular architecture. Uh, we have, uh, of course, the, the software for nodes, the clients that we use. We have a command line interface, and uh, maybe we're going to compile all these in JavaScript as well and uh, use uh, the same software to, to have a, a web uh, framework and to build extensions. And, uh, and then we have uh, uh, modules to, to build uh, miners. Uh, that we don't call miners because they don't mine anything since it's a uh, proof of uh, proof of stake, uh, but we call them bakers. You know, French people like uh, croissant. On aime, on aime la boulangerie. <laughs> it's, uh, it offers also an abstraction on, uh, on a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, it's, uh, it offers a, a powerful and extensible uh, RPC uh, introspection mechanism. So by RPC that uh, are uh, typed and automatically generated, uh, typed uh, uh, and uh, um, generated by um, a library in, uh, in the code, we are able to export large part of the, of the blockchain uh, via JSON objects and uh, provide this uh, an, easy access to, uh, an easy access to the internal data structure of the node itself. It uses certified cryptography, in, uh, namely ACL star, that it's uh, a library that uh, probably it's already sitting in um, most of your devices since it's also used by Firefox, for example. And uh, of course, he has a protocol compiler. The protocol compiler is this component that gets uh, OCaml code and uh, transform it in a, in a um, in a byte in a byte code that then it's uh, injected in uh, into the into the node, uh, <coughs> linked, and uh, then uh, allows to the node to behave in a different way. In the future, we also want to go toward the kind of a certified compilation pattern. So <coughs> the the compiler itself is certified and it is going to ensure that the protocol that you give is actually going to respect the specification um, with respect to the output of the compiler. Uh, so what is governance? Governance is basically the idea to establish a, di uh, a digital commonwealth by all the people that have uh, stakes uh, and uh, tokens in, uh, in, the Tezos, in the Tezos network. This means uh, that uh, we um, we want to give the community the possibility to decide how the protocol is going to evolve. It's not going to, we want to avoid the idea of uh, creating fraction and frictions in, uh, in the community to reduce hard forks. Uh, we, want to, um, <clears throat> we want to allow people to vote uh, and uh, to kind of uh, take uh, ownership on, uh, on this vote. Sometimes uh, it's, uh, the, the, this problem, uh, it's about uh, having, uh, convincing the large majority of people that my protocol is better than yours. This is done uh, via uh, an on-chain on system where there is a proposal that I'm going to explain in a moment, and then there is a vote. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, this kind of system rewards innovation because developers that uh, want to uh, uh, help and uh, this, um, develop a new protocol can be rewarded. This, uh, this system can be even embedded in the protocol itself, so it's like uh, in uh, some uh, blockchain, uh, blockchain system where the founders get a bit of tokens every time a um, uh, block is mined. This is uh, the idea that uh, a developer kind of gets rewarded automatically with a bit of tokens once his uh, uh, protocol is voted by the community and agreed to, to work to. It's like a kind of a payment. This is not uh, done, but it's kind of uh, a possible way of seeing this, uh, of seeing this evolution of, uh, of the protocol. And of course, this can be all changed, so it's the community is going to decide which direction they want to go. Uh, so, why we need governance today? Well, governance, uh, it's basically the rule of law. The protocol, it's what decides which block goes in, which block goes out, and which transactions are accepted. Uh, we can think about the, the Bitcoin uh, block size debate, the Ethereum hard forks, uh, and of course, 
kind of all the struggles that we've seen in the last few years about the, the communities. Uh, I've already talked about a bit about, uh, about innovations and how contributors might be rewarded. And uh, also we want, to, uh, we want to stimulate innovation and, uh, uh, and kind of giving the possibility to, um, uh, to, to, to allow this protocol to evolve faster. Uh, how the, govern how the governments currently works? Well, there is an upgrade proposal. Then there is a first round of approval that select uh, a few of, uh, of this approval, of this, uh, of this proposal by supermajority vote. Uh, then by supermajority vote, there is uh, the final upgrade proposal and uh, the vote is done over a period of uh, 24, uh, 24 days. Uh, this is kind of one of these uh, systems where you can even change the, the way we vote on the protocol, of course, because this is part of the protocol, how this is done now. Uh, we're going to do our first uh, protocol uh, upgrade uh, in, uh, in a few months, probably. So this is going to, 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 be the, to, to put to the test. We have done some, uh, some small upgrade, but uh, this is going to be the first public big um, protocol upgrade. So the main data structures, uh, the main data structures that uh, that we use, uh, it's a uh, it's a concurrent data structure that's presented by a shared module sing singleton, and uh, it's basically a linked list of monads. This is what a blockchain is for us. We use a monadic representation, so we encapsulate everything in a, in a monad. Uh, if we want to think about this, the monad that uh, that is Bitcoin basically is the uh, set of uh, unspent uh, UTXO plus the total work plus the block number. And the operation, of course, are the transaction. Uh, if we, generally speaking, we formalize all this by a function that is called apply, that gets a state, gets a number of uh, operations, and give us, a, uh, give us a next state. So where I want to go here is uh, how actually uh, we, we are going to choose one of these states, because of course when we apply an operation we can have multiple states, where we have a, a function that is called a score, so uh, all, the, all the blockchain can be summarized by a function that takes a, a, a function that apply and a function that is a score. A score basically gets a state and tells us which one is the one that it's going to be selected by the consensus algorithm. Uh, in the, the sense of the, in a self-amendment blockchain, uh, we can uh, pack apply and score inside the state. So we get these two functions and we put them in the state. And uh, then we have a new operation that is called change and gets two arguments, apply and score. And then we introspect this in, uh, into the protocol itself. Basically, we add to the, to the model itself a third function that allows to change the, the, the protocol itself. This is uh, the idea how this protocol amendment works in, uh, in practice. Uh, how can uh, be done in the future? Well, uh, we can have uh, representative democracy. We can, add, uh, we can elect certain parties to make the decision for us. Or uh, we can have uh, some kind of constitutionalism where we can uh, decide only to change part of the protocol but not others. For example, uh, we don't want to change uh, the, the way we vote on the protocol, for example. Uh, the, there are other many ideas that we can uh, we can uh, explore and go in that direction. I'm going to skip them for lack of time. So what are the takeaway from uh, today? Tezos is a self-amending crypto ledger. So uh, I talk about the self-amending part and this is what uh, was important for me. Uh, we developed this, uh, this uh, framework to be protocol agnostic. Uh, the idea that this protocol should evolve with the contribution of the community and I invite you all to have a, to have a look at it. Uh, we're going to publish more and more documentation and information as, uh, as we go. Uh, it's, a, it's a system that can be, can be used to soften all these uh, uh, problems related to, to governance that we've seen in the last few years. And also, uh, that for me as a researcher is very important, it's uh, the framework, the Tezos framework, it's a, a framework where we can uh, um, uh, experiment with a new consensus, new consensus algorithm. We can uh, plug, uh, for example, uh, an algorithm, a consensus algorithm for a private blockchain mm -hmm. and then uh, use it in, uh, in that way and then it wouldn't impact on, uh, on the rest of the system. It's just one algorithm. My 
dream is to have a, a library of, of, uh, of protocols that we can plug in Tezos and uh, then can evolve uh, um, all at the same time independently. So I have, uh, if you have questions, I invite you, and these are, my, these are our contacts. We also hiring, we are desperately trying to hire system administrator and uh, DevOps for us. Uh, please come to talk to me if you have any questions. Thank you. Anyone? Question? So you said the, the code is self-modifying. Um, I mean, you can, you can vote to modify the code. And it's in OCaml. Is there an interpreter, an OCaml interpreter? Does OCaml have an eval function that, that I don't know about? I, how does that work? No, basically, it's, uh, it's, compiled, to, it's, it's compiled to native code. And it's uh, dynamically linked. How it works? Basically, we get a piece of OCaml code that it's uh, stamped and signed by the, the person that wants to, that, by the developer. He send it to everybody else for evaluation. This uh, gets compiled, tested, and uh, then when the, the, the code is actually uh, voted for, it can be dynamically linked, and uh, we basically discard the old protocol, and we have the new protocol coming in. I mean, it runs, uh, it runs in, um, uh, in a sandbox. Oh, okay. So okay. It's, uh, it's not that has full access to everything. It's actually very restricted environment. Any other questions? Uh, I think I get this, but what was your motivation choosing OCalm uh, above other languages? What is? What was your motivation in choosing OCaml rather than other languages? So, the, um, as many of, uh, of these things, they go by nationality. The person that uh, invented Tezos, Arthur Breitman, is French, and uh, he went to a French, uh, he had a French education, he heard about OCaml, he went to a French company that proposed OCaml, and so he went in that direction. But also because OCaml is uh, statically, is a strong title, uh, typed, um, as, uh, as a strongly typed uh, type system, and uh, you can get some, uh, some assurances uh, on, uh, by the type system itself. Anyone else? Question? No? I have got one. Nobody else. Um, you, you talked about uh, some assurance, some verification. Is there formal verification? Can you speak to what you're able to do with OCaml? Because I, I just don't know what, what the state of the art is. So the part of, part of the, it depends what you want to verify. Some, uh, if you want to, to have a full uh, mathematical proof, then uh, you have to use a, 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 um, a program like COC that is a formal, verify, a formal verifier and code all your uh, system in COC and then maybe generate OCaml code out of it. But this is kind of the upper part. By just using the, the type system of OCaml, you can uh, um, kind of avoid uh, runtime errors because all uh, your, uh, your types are, uh, I mean, if you trust the, the compiler. So these are one of, uh, the, so one of the insurance. Uh, it is, it is. So I think the question was how many nodes? Are we running now? Uh, but actually, I don't know. There is, a, if you want to check it, there is. A, I mean, the, the main network is uh, is on. Uh, the the foundation is running. I think about 40 nodes, uh, and uh, we use these 40 nodes to bootstrap the rest of the network. And uh, I think we have uh, hundreds or uh, hundreds of people running nodes. There is a website that is called. Uh, um, uh, the the the, the tzscan.io, and uh, you have all the the, the information about the uh, running nodes, block baked, uh, and uh, transaction and uh, movement of uh, tokens over there. I think we have time for one last question. If somebody has another question, no. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.